Hi, Chelsea here from Product Marketing at Digital Ed. Let's talk question types. Did you know that you can author 15 different types of STEM questions in Mobius? And that a lot of these have several different subtypes? Cool, right? And then on top of all of those different question types is the ability to make your questions algorithmic and even adaptive. Mobius questions are authored and edited using the Mobius question editor, as shown here. Check out the online help to learn more about each of the individual sections of the question editor. What I do want to highlight is the fact that the question text area is where you will define the type of question that you're authoring. And this is done by clicking on the response area. When you click on the response area, that means that you are then selecting the type of question that you are going to be authoring. Let me show you what each of these STEM question types or response areas look like. For the clickable image question, you'll upload a custom background image and then specify clickable hotspots for your students to hover over and select as their correct answer. The document upload question is great for viewing offline components of an assignment, so something like a scratch paper or study notes or rough work. This question type can be ungraded and handles up to 30 different file types. There's two subtypes of this question type. First is the direct upload where the student has access to this choose file button where they'll click the button and then navigate locally on their computer and upload their selected file. The other subtype is the document code where the student will click generate document code and they'll get a unique value that they can then reference when uploading their file. And then you can connect this number to that student and match it to the question. The essay question type or long answer response, as the name implies, is great for long answer responses and essay responses, as well as mathematical proofs. It's a great outlet for mathematical proofs because the student has access to this WYSIWYG editor alongside the equation editor, where they can respond with natural math notation using these symbol palettes and they can also respond in LaTeX if they feel comfortable. The free body diagram is another question where you'll upload a custom background image, and then the student can use a graphical interface to work with forces, angles, and control points. You can customize the list of forces that appear here, and you can even have questions with multiple control points, as shown here. The HTML question type is a very cool question type because it can do anything that a web page can do. It has all types of functionalities like drag and drop, sliders, buttons, animations, and more. The coding for these questions is a little bit sophisticated because it uses HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Maple. But don't worry, if you're not a coding expert, there's a ton of HTML questions available in the content repository that you can choose from to automatically import into your class. So here's an example of how this question works, where I will drag Mercury to the first orbit, Venus to the next one, etc. If I scroll down to the second example, here's a slider example to represent pi. And here's another example of a click and drag functionality, just without an animation. The list question type is also called fill in the blank. It has two subtypes. First is a drop down option where the students can click to drop down and select the option from the menu. You can control the number of options that appear here as well as the order that they appear. These options can be text, math, or images. And then the second subtype of this question is the free text entry where the student can type in their response. The maple graded question type is an incredibly powerful question type, especially for mathematical questions. It's great for things that have more complex notation and constructs like algebra and calculus. It can handle things like integrals, derivatives, limits, differentials, matrices, and more. And it's also great at handling multiple variables. Another cool thing is that it's great at handling open-ended questions. So questions that have more than one correct answer. Here's an example. For this matrix question, it's asking for any two by two matrix where the determinant is one. And it's able to determine that the response that I enter is one of the correct answers based on the grading code that has been defined. The grading code of maple graded questions is highly customizable. This is really excellent for controlling partial grading.
You'll notice that students have access to the symbol mode entry. And if I scroll down to some other question types, there's text mode entry. Another neat thing about Maple Graded Questions is the fact that students can preview their responses as a plot. So if I enter my one of my correct answers and I click the P, I then get a preview of how Mobius interprets my response. That way I can double check that I'm correctly entering a response and that it's being properly interpreted by Mobius. If I'm working on a question type and I would prefer to respond in text mode, that's fine. For example, I can start to enter this. And if I decide that I want to switch to text mode, I can change my entry mode. and work in text mode. The matching question type is where I will associate items in list A with items in list B. These items can be anything, text, math, images, whatever you want. And I can decide how many matching pairs there are. To respond to this question, the student will then make the selection from the drop-down list and match it to the list below. Math app questions are another very cool question type inside of Mobius where they can be interactive, they can be graded, and they can even be ungraded. So they can just be designed for as calculators or as student exploratory tools inside of lessons or a part of other questions. So here's an example of a graded math app where the student can interact with these sliders and then check the correctness of their response. Alternatively, here's an ungraded example where it's just purely for visualization for the student. So they can play around with different settings just to visualize the concept that's being demonstrated. If you weren't able to author a math app from scratch, no problem. There's over 60 pre-built math apps inside of the content templates in your content repository. The mathematical formula question is a great math question, and it's kind of like a code-free version of the maple graded question. It accepts expressions or equations, and even chemical equations. You can choose from 10 subtypes, as shown here, depending on the type of correct answer that you're looking for. Students are able to respond in text mode, as shown here, or they can also switch to symbol mode. They can then select from the symbol palettes to correctly answer the question. And like I said, this question type is also great for chemical equations. The multiple choice question type can have options as anything, text, math, images, videos, audio clips, plots, whatever you'd like. You can also author option specific feedback for this type of question. So for each option, a student will receive specific feedback depending on their correctness. There's two subtypes of this type of question. First is the main multiple choice subtype where there's a single correct answer indicated by a radio button. So the student can just make one selection. The alternative is the multiple selection where the student can make more than one selection indicated by checkboxes. The multiple selection subtype is the one that can offer partial grading. You can control the number of options that are available. You can control the display orientation. So these can be horizontal or vertical, and you can also control the order of the options. The numeric question involves a numerical response. So depending on how you author the question, the correct answer could be a decimal, for example, like that. It could accept the thousand separator. It can accept scientific notation. It can accept a dollar value. It can accept negative values. And it can accept arithmetic and expressions. You can customize the grading tolerance without touching the code. So you can define whether you want to accept absolute accuracy or how many number of significant figures you want to accept or what percentage tolerance you want to accept and more. You can also choose to require a physical unit of measurement in this type of question. And so when the student clicks on the units field, they can then click on units help and they are then displayed the built-in unit system libraries for the SI metric Imperial and US customary systems. And Mobius also accepts equivalence of these units. The sketch question is a graphical sketching tool called the sketchboard, where the student will interact with these different tools to plot their response. They can graph plots, lines, 
parabolas, intervals, piecewise functions, systems of equalities, and even graph over top of a background function that you've plotted for them ahead of time. You as the instructor can also customize the look of this plotting area and also customize what tools are available up in this toolbar. And you can even customize the grading. So for a student to respond to this question, they would click on what they want to plot, plot their points, and then Mobius graphs it for them. They can then click and drag and move the points and the plot as needed. The sorting question has click and drag functionality where the student will select the item and then click it into the correct order. These items can be anything. They can be text, math, images, plus you can control the size and background color of these clickable items. You can also control the number of items that are displayed here. Lastly, there's the true and false question with two options of either true or false. Now that we've covered all 15 question types, we can touch on adaptive questions. Adaptive questions can bring together any type of Mobius question and pull it into an adaptive question form. You can have a range of configuration possibilities with these adaptive questions. So you could structure them to give a student a second chance at a question, or perhaps give them a step-by-step -step guide about how to get the correct answer, and more. There's a ton of other possibilities of how to configure these types of questions. This question, for example, if I enter the incorrect answer, will navigate me down a stream of questioning that will help guide me to how to get to the correct answer for this initial question. So I'll enter the incorrect answer. And when I click to verify, it tells me that I'm incorrect. And then it takes me through a guided solution of how to then do the backend work to get to that initial correct answer. Another thing that you can do with your STEM question types in Mobius is make them algorithmic. Every time I click try another, the values will update. When I actually choose an option and click how did I do, note that the feedback also updates based on the values that are here inside of the algorithmic question. If I click try another and I click a response and I click how did I do, I got that wrong. Again, the feedback and everything in the side of the question updates based on the algorithmic values. So this is another great aspect of Mobius STEM questions and helps add to the limitless aspect of the questions that you can author inside of Mobius. This was just a quick summary of what you can do with Mobius question types. Be sure to check out the Mobius online help for more details on how to make the most of your very own Mobius STEM questions.